All right, so um, this lesson, what we're going to do is um, look at another, you know, um, technique called the Gas Jordan elimination. And this is just, um, how do I call it, um, an addition to the Gaussian elimination. So what I'm going to do is I solve this problem in a Gaussian elimination lesson. And I'm going to just pick it and continue with um, using the Gas Jordan method okay so if you remember we had using the Gaussian elimination so like I said the gas Jordan is an addition to the Gaussian elimination so using the Gaussian elimination we had our augmented matrix reduced to this form um, we had one two if you if you reduce this okay negative five three six fourteen and then we had zero zero one zero negative seven over two negative six zero 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 again I have zero one half and then I mean that was in the final one I think we had a one and then a two here we said that our Gaussian elimination is to make sure that all the leading values in each row are one, right? So that's what we have. And then just beneath the one, everything else is zero, right? That's what we did. Now to add it up, the Gauss Jordan will look at how to reduce this backwards. So in this case, what you're going to do is to um, look at the values you have in the how do I call it in the last row uh, second row and then these rows right and then try to reduce it backwards so here you're going to stand on the leading values in the last row and the rest okay so that's what you're going to do now in this case you're going to look at the leading value in the last row which is one all right so what you do is if you look at it very carefully, everything you are performing is on this side. On this side, okay. Because these are just the part of the solution that we have, will equate something to. So everything I'm going to do here, the backwards elimination is going to start from the leading value in this row, which is one, and make sure that everything beneath that. So I'm going backwards like that. Is also zero. So what do you think I can do to that row? What I can do to that row is multiply 7 over 2 by this 1 and add it to this row and that's going to give me 0. So now my new row 2 will then transform to 7 over 2 times row 3 plus my original row 2. And that's going to make sure that this guy is 0. Now after doing that I have to also make sure that this 6 is also 0 beneath that same 1. And what I'm going to do is that my new row 1 will also be equal to... Um, negative 6 times root 3 right and negative 6 times root 3 and then plus my new row 1 my old row 1 so this is going to give me a new row 1 this is going to give me a new row 2 in that case if you're going to get a new augmented matrix in this form um this times negative 6 so uh, what i'm doing is i can choose to if you want you can choose to start writing from the bottom so that you have the one that you're not touching have your one here then you have two then what we did was the new row two should be seven over two times this one this row plus negative seven over two when you do that seven over two times one is seven over two plus negative seven over two that will give me zero there so i'm going to have um zero zero and i have a one here seven over two, seven over two times zero is seven over two i'm sorry seven over two times zero is zero plus one is still one so I'm going to have that I'm going to have zero here and then that part here is going to give us zero right and then you do seven over two times two is actually um seven right seven over two times two is seven then plus negative six is going to give us one I don't know if that makes make, make sense so we're going to get a one here and then on the other hand on the other hand so this has changed to one on the other hand, I'm multiplying negative 6 to this 1 and then add it to this 6. 
and so negative six times zero plus one will still give me that one on the top here will still give me two here will still give me negative five because i have negative six times zero which is zero plus that so i do the same thing for all of them and the part that's going to change here is going to be um me having negative six times one plus six which is zero and negative six times two which is negative twelve plus fourteen and that's going to give me two so that is a new form of it now we go again and try to make sure that we reduce this this part now the leading value of the part that we are interested in is this one like i always say you can try to always divide this and know that okay i'm actually working with these parts that part the other end is actually for you know um equation people to solve for the you know equation at the final step now what you're going to do is in this row you are done the leading value from the backward is one and everything beneath it is zero now you go to the next row the leading value is one here they make sure that the value beneath that is zero so what we are going to do is we are going to transform our new our row one to a new row one and that should be negative five times row two right um the five sorry not negative five it's five times row two plus our original row one and that's going to transform and give us this matrix like i said you can start writing from the bottom so that you know what you are do doing i'm gonna have another zero and i have one and two here so i'm gonna have zero zero i'm not gonna touch this one because that's what i'm basing on right and i have my one and the next i'm transforming is this last row so five times one is five plus negative five and that will give me zero i, I just want to make sure that everything within this one is zero so i'm going to have one two because five times zero is zero zero plus plus one is still one and then the same thing happens to the other part but this part is going to get to zero and this is going to get to three and i'm going to have my zero back and then five times one here which is five plus two is going to give me seven right so i'm going to have seven here and this is what we call the gas jordan elimination so I'm done because if I come to the last this row here in the first row, the leading value here is actually one, right? Um, yeah, you can look at it that way. It's one, and that leading value in that case has no other elements beneath that. Okay, so if not that we had only three rows, you would have done it for each and every row. Look for the leading value. Make sure that the values above it okay so in that case you can put it that way the values above it is actually zero so you have, you perform the same um row of elementary row operations but in this case you are doing it from the bottom to the up okay so here if i'm supposed to solve this again we have our x1 here x2 x3 x4 x5 and then these are the part that we're going to equate them so what this whole thing means is that i have from the bottom I'm going to have 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 plus 0x4 plus 1 times x5, which is f5, is equal to 2. And in that case, x5 is 2. And indeed, we had x5 to be 2 in our previous lesson. Now, I come to the next one, which is going to give us 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3 plus 0x4 plus 0x5 should be five sorry should be one and that means x3 is what one and the same thing that we had for um the previous lesson now you go to you go to the next one and that is a very key point in that case i have one x1 so i have x1 plus 2x2 and i don't have any x3 in there right so i can just this is a line dividing so i don't have any x3 in there so what i'm going to do is plus zero x3 okay let me put it that there and three x4 and then um plus zero x what um five should give me seven right and then in that case i'm going to have my x1 to be equal to seven minus two x2 minus three x 
since we don't have any other equation to solve for x2 and x4 it means x2 and x4 are free variables so i can say that x4 is equal to some constant let's say s and then x2 is equal to t and in that case x1 will be equal to 7 minus 2t minus 3s and indeed these are the same solutions we had for our previous lesson so it means that if you use the gaussian elimination or the gaussian jordan elimination you're going to get the same solutions the only difference that makes that that makes the gaussian jordan elimination easier is that after the gaussian jordan elimination and you are solving when you're solving for your values for x1 x2 and s3 and the rest it makes it so easier you just the solution just come out straight away so from from here i can just say that s5 is two here i can say x3 is what one and then i can know that okay i have my x2 here x4 here these are free variables because I, I can't have any other thing to solve for them right so that's what you can do and that we have special names we give to this method so this method is actually called the row reduce all right reduce row actually that's how it goes reduced row a colon um four that is a gas jordan and then the gaussian elimination is row a column four maybe a column four you can call it that way a column form but the reduced row a column form is the gas jordan elimination method all right so what i have for you here is to use the gas jordan elimination method to solve this or you can try to use the gas elimination and make sure that you get these same values or these same solutions and again you can try to use the gas jordan elimination method which is going to help you solve this all right so yeah see you in our next lesson going to talk about something else maybe yeah something more deeper and then make sure that we understand all the basis and the elementary stuff that we need in linear algebra all right see you